Ed Brubaker. How you doing, sir? Ah, tired. Yeah, it's been a long. <laughs> we're here at the Image Expo. It's been a long day, right? You got a, your yeah. line was ridiculously I long. I know it was insane. Yeah, very cool. It was uh, much more than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is really the first time we've gotten to talk about Fatal since it came out. Congratulations! It looked like it did really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah we cannot apparently print enough. Yeah. <laughs> we are now in a fourth printing yeah. of uh, issue one, a third printing of number two, and. Looking like issue three will be sold out by the time it gets released. So that's amazing. It's that's insane. Great. Yeah, our numbers just keep going up every issue, yeah, which is unprecedented for me. That's great. So, how does it feel to be part of the whole Image experience now? You're one of the newer creators in Image. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of the newer creators in Image. I was I was actually not even involved in like, or I was working in independent comics when Image launched. Actually, writing and drawing my own comics. So. <laughs> I always looked at Image very much like, hmm, what are those guys doing? Yeah. But uh, no, it's good. I mean, uh, Kirkman and, and Eric Stevenson really sort of you know came after me for a long time to do a book here. And yeah. so I decided to, to give them a shot with this one because it was a new project. And yeah. you know I figured at worst we'd do what we usually do. And you know they've, they've really gotten behind it and really pushed it. And you know been one of their best-selling books for very the last cool. couple months. So really good. So the, the premise, the kind of, it, it's very you know fans of Criminal and, and your work, even Incognito, it's familiar because it's Sean Phillips and it's yeah. a little noir -y, but there's a little bit of Lovecraft kind of like you know, yeah like um, supernatural yeah exactly yeah. and that's that's probably as much influenced by like playing Lovecraft role-playing games as anything you know or, or like old hammer horror movies and yeah. I just I've been wanting to do something that tackled horror for a while and I just couldn't figure out a way to do it without trying to be like Neil Gaiman or right. Alan Moore or something and I needed to figure out a way to do it that right. still felt like me and I had had this idea for a project about immortal people for a long time, and I couldn't figure out how to make it work right. And the one aspect that kept coming back was the idea of this immortal incarnation of the femme fatale. Mm -hmm. And I, wanted, I had been wanting to do a story for, God, a, like 10 years where the femme fatale was the main sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. And then I just suddenly like realized I could merge all those ideas and get my horror thing in and one thing. So. It feels really epic to me. It's yeah. like feels like the biggest story I've ever done. Like I'm just about to start the second arc, which mostly takes place in the '70s in LA. Oh, wow. and it's like the sort of post Manson family LA. That's cool. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a super fucked up time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the, the first arc takes place in uh, as someone who lives in San Francisco. It's like to see San Francisco yeah. represented. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing. Like in Criminal, we created our own little fake city, yeah. and have everything. And it feels very real worldy. And then this one, it's like very, you know, I wanted to ground it as much in the real world as possible wall because it makes the horrible stuff and the monsters scarier when it seems like you're investigating a regular crime scene. It's like, oh no, there's like a guy who was sacrificed to a devil. Yeah. Like, you know, like how, how crazy would double indemnity be if the reason she needed to get rid of her husband was because he was going to like Rosemary's baby her. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was my idea. It was like, what if there's all these other reasons for these noir stories? Yeah. And... But yeah, so I thought I'll put it in real places this yeah. time, and and you know, and like like that first scene, uh, you know, with the car chase being chased by the plane on, you know, that's Highway One, yeah. you know, that's where the guy, you know, those guys from Pixar, like, you know, crashed, and and it's like. That was like to me. I was like every time I've been on that highway, I've been like terrified. Oh, me too. I drove so, it once. Yeah. Like, never again. <laughs> yeah, no. My wife is really good at driving those curvy roads, so I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, no. That's a that's a good place for like a terrifying car chase. You yeah. know, when it's being chased by a plane, because that would be even worse. Because they don't even have to worry about the hairpin turns. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's too cool. So second arc's gonna go into L.A. And, yeah, second arc is L.A. and. Uh, not sure exactly where most of the third arc takes place yet, but yeah. I know it takes place in modern times. Very so cool. there's a lot of issue three opens in modern times. It's like the we, the story started in modern times and then flashed back to the 50s, and mm -hmm. uh, we come back to that guy from the modern times throughout the first two arcs. But the third arc is is all about him and her, and cool. so it sort of ties up everything. Yeah. So and now you're working with Sean Phillips, who so worked Criminal and Incognito. Is yeah. this is Fatal and like you guys going to rotate through? We're going to get more Criminal at some point, or is it going to well, be just Well, we're going to do Fatal. Until it's done, we've got 15 issues figured planned out right now, yeah. and it, it might get a little bit longer. I'm not sure. We'll see how this how it goes. Yeah. But right, like it was going to be 12, and then I realized I needed more room for each arc because yeah. there's so much story. And so I just thought, well, let's make it 15 and see how that goes. To, yeah. but um, yeah, we're going to do that all the way through like one a month until it's done, and then you know, and then we'll see what we'll hope. The plan right now is to go back to criminal, but you know, 
I, you know, two, you know, six months ago, I wasn't going to do Fatal. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it's funny because you never I, know. I still feel like Criminal is like new because it's yeah. like it's something new. So, because there's so a lot of the conversation here at the con has been about new ideas and comics and things. Yeah. like that. But you've been in Criminal for years now. So. Yeah, we started in 2006, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, Sean and I have been working together for 12 years now. Yeah. We started. Uh, he was our inker on Scene of the Crime, and yeah, then he and I did Gotham Noir together, and then Sleeper, and. Sean and my wife are the longest relationships. We I started I started working with Sean around the same time I started dating my wife. So <laughs> there's no jealousy you know, there. No, <laughs> no, you know, no. But it is really it's like it's you know I, I realize now it's become a pretty long collaboration and you know I love working with the guy. I want to work with him for you know as long as I work in comics, which right. hopefully will be the rest of my life. So. Become one of those like legendary teams, like where people look back at the Brubaker well, Phillips years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about it. there aren't that many legendary teams that stayed yeah. together. Yeah. You know, it's like you look at those legendary teams and you know. You get Munoz and Sampaio are the only ones I can think of that actually continued to work together as like a writer artist team right, yeah. for you know 20, 30 years or yeah. whatever. So. Especially, especially as we get old. I mean, we grew up with the the runs like the yeah. Lee, Lee Kirby. Yeah, Lee and Kirby then, was 10, yeah. 10, 12 years of yeah. them working on a bunch of comics together and yeah. then nothing ever again. Yeah, exactly. You know, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's something to do with that. But. Uh, yeah, so weird. Yeah. That Lee Ditko thing didn't last that long. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I like those. I like those legendary runs, and I like that. I found a collaborator that I can, you know, I've been lucky, like Michael Lark I've worked with a lot, yeah. and he and I are about to do some more stuff together, and Steve Efting and I are going to do some more stuff together, cool. and so I get these guys, and I get my hooks into them, and I don't want to let them go. Yeah, well, it's the, the Bendis school of uh, yeah. teaming, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Brian's had those legendary runs, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So do you think you'll uh, come to Image with some um, additional creator-owned titles at some point, or...? Uh, we'll see. I mean, um, yeah, I uh, have a couple things on my plate that, you know, that I've got to, you know, I still have commitments at Marvel and stuff, but I'd like to do more, you know, stuff that I own, and and they're certainly, you know, offering, you know, a really good deal, yeah. so... Well, I mean, it's interesting, and, and as a creator, I mean, you've had a really interesting career from your own, you know, the, your early work to the corporate work, and now with this kind of more independent work, a lot of creators are here at the con. This sort of thing has. You, do you have any advice for up and coming creators in terms of how to approach their careers? Or you know? boy, I don't know. You know, I always say make a plan. When I was in high school, I was going to make movies, and yeah. then I, but I always did comics because you know you could always afford paper, whereas yeah. Super Eight film was expensive to develop on a on a teenager's. And it took weeks to yeah. get back. I know right? it was ridiculous. It impossible. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, I you know I, I never planned to be a writer, and I certainly never planned to write Batman. I was always going to be like a guy who either wrote and directed films or, or wrote and drew my own comics and just sort of ended up writing comics for other people instead and then suddenly I ended up writing Batman and Catwoman and Captain and it's like these things were not things I necessarily planned yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like opportunities that were there and I was like could I do that and you know a lot of it was like knowing Bendis who I'd known for you know 20 years and it's like seeing him doing Spider-Man I'm like I wonder if I could do Batman then mm -hmm. and you know it's just you know, sort of following the opportunities that develop. So, you know, the part of it is figuring out what you want to do, and part of it is following the opportunities that present themselves and being able to do it when they're there. Uh, you know, my thing was I always had one project, or at least, that I was working on that was just my thing. You know, like when it, for, it was, you know, Scene of the Crime, and then Dead Enders, and then Sleeper, and Gotham Central, which, you know, which Gotham Central is a Batman book, but really it was just me and Greg writing a cop book. Right. You know, and, you know, as long as I've been at Marvel, I was only at Marvel for like a year before I launched a book through Icon. Right. You know, and it's like, I, you know, I've always had that extra outlet that's just the thing I want to do only for, you know, creative impulses. So yeah. that's, you know, don't get lost in that world. You always have to have your own it's something that shows what your voice is so you can develop your voice, I think. Yeah.